Hello friends, I'm finally back. Um, I haven't done a video in quite a while. Um, you know, life's just been busy. And um, but today I want to talk to you about a Netflix original movie called 1922. It is based on a Stephen King novella. And um, you guys know that I'm a big fan of Stephen King and his short stories and novellas are kind of my favorite. Um, I mean, I love, you know, some of his novels, but I really love a good Stephen King short story. And I had never heard of 1922, and actually until this movie came out, because uh, it's from a newer collection of novellas. I believe it's in Full Dark, No Stars. And um, fun fact, I sort of gave up on Stephen King short fiction after just after Sunset. My favorite of his is Night Shift, which is his first collection. And then I feel like every collection after that gets a little bit weaker and a little bit weaker. Um, I only liked a couple stories from Everything's Eventual. I didn't like any stories from Just After Sunset, and so I haven't really given anything a chance since then. Um, I should probably revisit some of those stories now that I'm, you know, a little older. And maybe, uh, maybe if my hopes aren't so high, I'll find some things that I like. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Um, we're here to talk about 1922, which is about a man who murders his wife in 1922. That's not really a spoiler. Um, if you've seen the trailer, then you pretty much know that. Um, and then it's about, after he murders his wife, it's about his sort of like descent into madness and the consequences that occur because of this murder. And, um, it's a good, a little bit twisty story. You're not sure, is this really happening? Is this in his head? Um, are these supernatural things really occurring? Um, there's some really creepy stuff with rats, um, that's very unsettling. Um... But, you know, Stephen King has been such a hot commodity the last few years. I mean, I really believe that it all started kind of with Stranger Things, which, um, if you've seen Stranger Things, and if you're watching this, you probably have, um, it's very Stephen King, Steven Spielberg inspired. And I think that kind of got people back into the the mood for Stephen King. And then, of course, it came out and it was huge and a huge hit and very popular with horror fans and normies. And, um... So a lot of his work is getting adapted, and Netflix picked up Gerald's Game, which I have not seen but I've heard good things about, and they did 1922, which generally has good reviews. And so I think it's really cool that we're getting some of these, uh, you know, lesser Stephen King stories, especially since a lot of what was adapted when he was popular before was just, oh, it's just garbage. So um, it's nice to see what people are doing with some of his smaller properties. So, um... 1922 stars Thomas Jane, who is a Stephen King veteran. He was in The Mist, and he was also in Dreamcatcher. Um, I really loved him in The Mist, thought he was great. Um, I also loved Thomas Jane in The Punisher. Uh, John Bernthal is a great Punisher, but so is Thomas Jane. Um, and he did a really great job in this movie. Um, you know, Thomas Jane is kind of a hunky, good-looking guy, but in this movie he's kind of an older farmer. He's a really thick accent. Um, of course, like I said, it's set in 1922, so it's a period piece, and um, I feel like his acting is really pretty good. There are some moments that are a little wobbly and a little weak, um, but overall, uh, the character has kind of a charm and an appeal, even though he's a murderer. It's part of what's good about it is this little bit of conflict, you know. You're sort of rooting for him, but you're also sort of like, well, but he's a murderer. He deserves this. Um... So, the cast is really good, um, the art direction and set direction is fantastic. Like I said, it's a period piece, um, so it's really, it's, it's, it's a solid watch for that alone, I think, especially for being such a low budget. I know it's a hard thing to tackle a period piece on a low budget, and they did a really good job. Um, it's a slow burn. If you're not a fan of a slow burn or having to, like, really think about your horror, you might not dig this movie. Um, it was different than I expected, but in, in the end was kind of ambiguous, which I sort of liked. I love a good ambiguous ending. Um, but it really, you know, I don't want to get too much into the details because I do feel that it's better if you just go into it. I watched it with my husband and he's just like, what are we watching? And I was like, oh, we're watching this movie 1922. It's based on Stephen King. Just, that's it. That's all I told him. And I, at first he was kind of like, I don't know what I thought about that. Um... But then we, as we talked about it the next day, you know, I think we both realized that we, we did really like it. We took some things 
out of it. We had some discussion about it. What do you think this means? What do you think that means? And I feel like that's the mark of a good movie. If you're still thinking about it a day or two later and, you know, trying to figure out what it all meant and what the moral of the story was, what the point of the story was, I mean, I think that that's, can only be a good thing. So, um, so without getting into too much detail, I would just say that uh, 1922 is definitely a recommend. Um, like I said, it's a good kind of slow burn. You know, there's some psychological elements to it. Um, nothing, nothing too crazy and gory. It's pretty, it's like kind of a good ghost story, but somewhere between a ghost story and a psychological thriller or slow burn. Um, can I say slow burn one more time? Um, anyway, so check it out. It's on Netflix. If you have Netflix, it's not going to cost you anything. You might as well check it out. Um, and I think that's all I have to say about that one. So, you know, uh, keep your ears and eyes peeled because I'm sure there'll be many more Stephen King properties to come there for a while. I thought, you know, am I reviewing too much Stephen King stuff? It just, you can't avoid it. The man is everywhere. Uh, you know, he's had such an influence on our culture for the past four or five decades, whatever. Um, so, uh, I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for, thanks for watching.